Hello St. James. Today's community meeting is going to be a super special combined full school community meeting. So if you're in the lower school, you get to check out some upper school segments you don't usually see. And if you're in the upper school, you get to have a little throwback to remember what it was like to have Animal of the Week and things like that. We hope you guys enjoy it and we look forward to making you another community meeting for next week. Thank you, St. James. Hi, lower school. This is Miss A. Carol and I am currently laying on my floor because sometimes you just have to take a break. Right now, I'm taking a break to give you some shout outs. Shout out number one this week goes to fourth grader Milan. Milan, I miss you. I miss your smile. And I've just been thinking about how you're such a good friend. And I miss seeing you make good, strong friendships in fourth grade. Keep it up. Keep being yourself. I'm proud of you. And I can't wait to see you soon. Shout out number two goes to Mr. Andrew. Andrew, one thing I've learned about you over the past 10 weeks now is that you're an amazing writer. Thank you for all of your hard work. Your last project, you said, I think I'd make a good boss. Do you? And my answer is yes. You have strong leadership skills and you're doing what it takes to be your best. Shout out number three goes to Miss Kayla in sixth grade, thank you so much for your leadership, your hard work, and your dedication. I am so proud of you. You have what it takes to be an amazing seventh grader. And now it is time for bonus shout outs. Bonus shout out number one goes to Bryn. Bryn has been one of the best lower schoolers at turning in missing work. And I have been loving the work that I've gotten. It's good. It's well thought out. She's ready for sixth grade. And bonus shout out number two goes to Dylan. Dylan, your project from last week was so amazing that I can tell you are always ready to risk it for the biscuit. Thank you so much for your hard work. Those are all my shout outs for this week. Thank you, St. James. Hello, Upper School. It's time for your shout outs. First of all, I'd like to shout out this plant. He's doing his very best and is starting to grow a little bit more now that he's getting some sunshine out on the table every day. I hope you come and visit and say some nice things because everyone knows that nice words help plants grow faster and stronger. I would also like to shout out a long list of eighth graders and a medium sized list of seventh graders who attended both both of their class events this week. So that means they attended their study hall and their community circle, plus I'm sure some other ones, uh, some music study halls, some coding study halls, some other awesome things. Maybe even they stopped by the table as well. But those individuals include Hamira, Karaya, Zairi, Kair, India, Sahid, Kasia, Neiman, and Markayla. Thank you everyone for brightening our days with your smiles, even digitally. Hopefully we'll be able to see you soon. And until then, stop by the table to help this guy grow into a nice, strong, healthy plant. I hope that you all have a wonderful day. We are thinking of you and we miss you. Good afternoon, St. James. I'm coming to you today with an important announcement. I was under the impression that this whole trend of animals visiting different kinds of animals at the zoo was sort of a quarantine phenomenon. Turns out I was super wrong. This has been going on for years. There is an entire slew of videos on the internet of zookeepers taking animals to meet other kinds of animals. I find this to be encouraging and amazing news. Today, I present you with Tiny Goat Visits Porcupine. This happened almost two years ago. It's endearing and heartwarming, and I hope that you love it. Hi, St. James Lower School. It's Miss Padilla, and I have a guest, Miss A. Carroll here. We are socially distancing, mask, car, being more than six feet apart. We are bringing you the word of the week. Miss A. Carroll, what is it? It's abeja. Abeja. It means bee. bee in Spanish. And we chose that word because we both have on yellow, and bees are yellow. We miss you very much. We love you. We'll see you later, Lower School. Hi, Upper School. I'm here to tell you about your Saint Leader of the Week. It is this woman. Her name is Hedy Lamar. What's she famous for? It's hard to sum it up in a single sentence, Upper School. 
She was born in 1914. She died in the year 2000. She was once known as the most beautiful woman on earth. She was an actress with MGM. She was in about 20, 30 movies. But what I think is cooler, in addition to being a Hollywood uh, movie star, Hedy Lamarr invented the technology that is used for all Bluetooth. So if you're somebody that has wireless headset that you like, it's because of her. If you're somebody that likes to um, do Bluetooth with like speakers connected to your laptop, it's because of her. None of that would be possible without Hedy Lamarr. It's also rumored that at one point she worked for the CIA, but they're really secretive about that stuff, so it's not confirmed. Um, she was a pretty popular woman in Hollywood, but I think it's cool that she also had a fantastic brain. So um, for all of you gorgeous upper school students out there, remember, beauty and brains. Bye. Good morning, St. James School. Mr. Todd here with your College of the Week. As you can see, our College of the Week this week is... Holy Family University. Holy Family. So Holy Family University is located in Northeast Philadelphia. It's about 25 minutes drive from St. James School. Um, there are three members from the St. James class of 2016 who will be freshmen this fall at Holy Family. That is Tiny Drain, James Trout, and Tamia Sanders. Give so it up. proud, guys. Yay. Holy Family is known for its nursing program. So let's have a look at some um, of their academic programs. Let's get me out of the way. As you can see, they have, um, this is their academics page. I can't believe Ms. Carol's cursor. Okay, undergraduate programs. Let's have a look. Here's a list of all of their undergraduate programs. As you can see, they have education. So if you wanted to become a teacher, you could go to Holy Family. Nursing, and their uh, natural sciences is a big field. They have many different pre-medical type programs you could get involved in. Um, they have a school of business administration. So there's lots to offer at Holy Family. Uh, what I love about Holy Family is you could choose to either live on campus in the dorms there, or you can be a commuter. 95% of Holy Family students commute, which means they sleep at home at night, but spend all of their waking hours and their daytime hours at school, at Holy Family, taking classes, hanging out with their friends, going to clubs, going to sporting events, and that sort of thing. If you have any more questions about Holy Family, I suggest you reach out to Tymea James or Tyne, or talk to me when I see you again. See ya! Hello, Lower School. The animal of the week is the pangolin, which is an, looks like a cross between an armadillo and an anteater. This is the pangolin right here. If we scroll down, there's some more pictures. Here's what it looks like when it walks. Very weird animal. Very weird, but very interesting. They kind of wobble. I don't think they can move very well because of these, these spines. Let's learn some more. If we go down here. They are found in the tropical regions of Asia and Africa. They look like scaly anteaters. And one thing I found um, really interesting is they can emit a noxious fume that stinks kind of like a skunk when they're threatened. They're also covered in large keratin scales. And uh, keratin is actually very similar, if not the same, as the same material that your fingernails are made out of. So they're basically covered in fingernails, giant fingernails. So creepy. Um, they eat insects. They're insectivores, but usually only eat one or two specific types of bugs, despite there being lots of bugs around. They're very picky eaters. Um, they like to kind of be alone. They don't really travel in packs like wolves would. Um, they only come together about once a year in order to mate and uh, they're critically endangered. So this website is actually dedicated towards helping um, preserve things like pangolins. Um, yeah, so we gotta take care of them. Thanks, Lower School. Take care. Hello, St. James. For your social skill today, I'd like to talk about something that I think a lot of us have probably experienced so far this quarantine, and that, my friends, is conflict. 
no matter what a great relationship you have with your friends, with your family, or with your neighbors, there's always going to organically be some kind of conflict that's going to come up. It's just part of human nature. So what I want to remind you of right now is a few of those really awesome strategies that you have in your toolkit from social skills of how to effectively deal with conflict. These strategies can be used for conflict with younger and older siblings, with parents, grandparents, neighbors, really anybody if you're really mindful about how you use them. Uh, the first conflict resolution skill that I want to remind you of is that you've got to be able to do a self-check for yourself when you recognize that you're engaging in a conflict. Conflict isn't bad. It's not something you shouldn't have. Usually a lot of growth comes out of conflict. But if you go into a conflict when you're in the red or you're in the blue on the mood meter, it's not going to be as fruitful as it could be, and it's probably going to end with hurt feelings and with things left unsaid. So when you realize that your heart's beating a little faster, for me, my face starts to get a little bit hot, you're going to want to take a second and say, hold on, I need to take a deep breath to make sure that my brain is really online and I can help solve this conflict. If you realize that you're not ready to solve the conflict, you need to advocate for yourself and say, can we come back to this in a little bit? The second thing I want to remind you of is to use I statements. Now, I know that you might not have our poster at home of Mr. Todd, when you don't clean the dishes, it makes me feel blank. Please blank, right? You don't have that at home, but you can make it your own. The basic parts of an I statement that you have to make sure you include is that you're talking about yourself and how you're feeling, and you have a specific thing that you're asking the other member of the conflict to do. I think you guys will do great with this. I hope you have lots and lots of peace going on in your homes, and if you need somebody to assist you with conflict and conflict resolution, feel free to send me a message. I'm more than happy to help you out. Thank you, St. James. Good afternoon, St. James. It's Mr. McDonough with three quick announcements. Number one, only two weeks left in marking period number four. Please make sure you're working hard to earn the grades that you want. Number two, good luck on all the math and science combined projects. I'm looking forward to seeing some exciting, cool things. And number three, our virtual art showcase led by Miss Stewart is coming up next Friday, June the 5th. Please make sure you're submitting all your work to her up on Artsonia by June the 3rd at 5 p.m. We have some incredible artists out there and we'd love to see your work. Bye St. James. Be safe.